and shortly after that, and met obligations, it is clearly violating the spirit of that agreement. President Trump also had some harsh words for North Korea in his UN speech, which the leaders of South Korea and Japan are now applauding. While they also tough than Kim. I had uh, this. Uh... whether China and Russia has uh, supported uh, this uh, resolution and so we have to have their cooperation whether or not uh, this can be implemented or not uh, well this has to be uh, implemented uh, to make North Korea change its policies now is not the same time for dialogue now is the time to apply pressure and North Korea's foreign minister also weighed in on President Trump's speech yesterday, saying Mr. Trump sounded like a barking dog. We'll likely hear more from him about that during his speech at the U.N. tomorrow. Heather Ruff. Yeah, he always has an interesting response. He certainly does. All right, Garrett, thanks so thanks. much. And the left continuing to hammer President Trump for his hard stance and that speech when he was talking about a nuclear North Korea. But Washington Times columnist Charles Hurt, he says that liberals should ask why former President Obama let it get this far to begin with. I just have a hard time understanding why it is that uh, that advising North Korea, advising Rocket Man, that if you do uh, attack one of our neighbors or, or attack the United States, you will be annihilated. I think that that very clear message is something that's very, very important. Listening to Democrats talk about all of these things that, uh, that Trump didn't address or didn't address properly or didn't respect, all of these problems were given to us by Barack Obama. And it, the, the, whether it's Russian uh, run amok, whether it's nuclear uh, uh, North Korea, Korea or ISIS on the march or uh, the, the mayhem in Syria and Iran, all of this was bequeathed to us by his predecessor. Right. And so the idea of trying something different is actually, uh, I think, probably a pretty smart idea. And now to this Fox News alert. I can't quit following this story. Yeah. Rescuers in Mexico City, they're working around the clock to save a 12-year-old little girl who was trapped underneath that school that was destroyed by the devastating earthquake. Uh, yeah, it's really an epicenter of this story. Crews unable to pull her out at this point, but they have been able to get her water and oxygen. Eleven other children already have been rescued from the rubble of the school. It's just incredible. The 7.1 quake, leaving at least 21 little kids and four adults at that school dead. Wow. But more than 240 people total have died across the city. But some officials say that that number could reach 1,000. I hope they get her. Yeah. And some others. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And another major disaster, Puerto Rico, waking up in total darkness this morning after taking a direct hit from Hurricane Maria. The entire island now without power, and authorities are warning it may not be returned or turned back on to everybody. It could take months to get that to happen. And on top of that, more than two feet of rain falling in parts of uh, the country, turning streets into raging rivers. Look at that. Officials saying, quote, the island is destroyed. Well, President Trump tweeting this, we are with you and the people of Puerto Rico. Stay safe. Can you imagine 3.5 million people in the dark, no power? I cannot imagine that. Yeah. It could take a long time to get that power back on and what a storm and what a season it's been so far Janice. yeah, yeah are and we done with it yet uh, you know uh, maria are we talking about maria or the season the season, the season. The season. The season. no the it's season early. lasts yeah. until november 30th unfortunately and we could have more storms on the way but mm -hmm. for now we are watching maria i mean incredible wind gusts uh in excess of 130 miles per hour across not only puerto rico but the u.s virgin islands uh just an incredible storm, still packing winds of 115 miles per hour. It went over mountainous terrain of Puerto Rico, it disrupted the storm a little bit, weakened it, but it still has warm water ahead of it. So we think that it has the potential to strengthen a little bit, but we are hoping it goes east of the Turks and Caicos, east of the Bahamas, and east of the U.S. Fingers are crossed. Here's the latest advisory, as you can see, hoping everything is okay in the Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas. And it looks like, fingers are crossed, we're still gonna have to monitor this, but it looks like this will miss the U.S. next week. So we will continue to follow it and, of course, bring you the
the very latest from Puerto Rico as well. Back to you, Rob Puerto Rico Heather. and the U.S. Virgin Islands, they yep. need a break. They do. Right. They do. Thank right. you. Janice, thanks so much. Okay. President Trump throwing his full support behind the last-ditch effort to repeal and replace Obamacare, but he is calling out Republican holdout Senator Rand Paul. Now the president tweeting, Rand Paul is a friend of mine, but he is such a negative force when it comes to fixing health care. Graham Cassidy bill is great, ends O'Care. The new bill aims to shift more power and funding away from Washington and back to the states. And President Obama now breaking his silence about the GOP's attempt to undo his signature health care law. When I see people trying to undo that hard-won progress for the 50th or 60th time, it is aggravating. It's certainly frustrating to have to mobilize every couple of months to keep our leaders from inflicting real human suffering on our constituents. Well, the Senate is set to vote on the new bill next week because they're up against the deadline. So what are yeah. the chances that it will pass? And exactly what is in the new bill? Yeah, that's the big question. Here to break it down for us, Brian Brenberg, chair of the program in business in finance at the King's College in Manhattan. Brian, thanks so much for coming on this morning. Good morning Good to you. Good morning. Uh, yeah, and you know, it, it, that's the big question is what, what exactly changes about this? You know, one analyst that I heard that I, I really think I agreed with said, you know, at the end of the day, we're still going to have socialized health care. At the end of the day, Obamacare still in a lot of ways wins the, the war. We're just trying to figure out how to implement it in a way that seems a little bit more conservative. Does that I'd sound... See, sort of. The, the money stays the same. There's yeah. still money coming from the federal well, government. It keeps 90% of it. That's right. right. The big difference is the decision about how to spend the money is going to happen at the state level, not the federal level. And that could create some very big differences depending on what state you're talking about. For instance, if you're talking about a red state like Texas, you could see some very big reforms, dropping some of the coverage mandates that were included under Obamacare, right. changing Medicaid. You could see it moving in a more market-oriented direction. Yeah. In a place like New York or California, you could see it go very opposite here, actually more toward a single-payer system. So you could get a lot of diversity in the United States around health care if this bill passes. Yeah, Rand Paul is the one Republican Republican who has come out and said that no, he will not vote for this at this point. They need 50 to come on board if they decide to bring this up next week. Um, and his argument is that, well, we're just saying it does not appeal Obamacare. But when he was voting for the, what, skinny Obamacare yeah. bill, yeah. he did vote for that. So the difference being that this takes, what, block money and gives it to the different states, but some get different amounts than others. Yeah, it's not quite clear in principle why Rand Paul is opposing this yeah. bill versus the one that he voted for. I think he has some explaining to do there. He's right that this isn't a repeal of Obamacare. It's right. just a repackaging and a repurposing, moving decision rights and money down to the states. That's a big deal. That's federalism, but it's not a complete repeal of Obamacare. If that's his standard, he's right, but you see some inconsistency. And this bill in actually made. existed before. It did. So this, they've it, discussed this before. It, yeah, it's been around for the better part of a year. It took a back seat when we had the other repeal uh, plan on the table. Okay. Now that that's gone, yeah. this is back again, but at the very last minute, this of course. This is okay. the backup plan. Let's go to a couple of screens here to show you. Uh, here's just a list of the governors that are against this bill. Of course, right there uh, at the top, if we can pull that up, uh, is uh, you know a, a big critic John of, Kasich of, of, of Ohio. President Obama, yeah. Republican, yeah. Uh, or President Trump. Uh, yeah, but John Kasich right there at the top of the list. A couple other swing state uh, governors as well. There are a number of people against this bill, but the number of people that aren't on this bill as well. Mm -hmm. um, I guess at the end of the day, you know, the question is, does this get through? Well, uh, look, it's going to debate. When you're talking about the decision of one or two yeah. senators, you never know. It can change yeah. in a heartbeat. I think what you have going on for the states, you look at some of those governors who oppose this. Who they, did or did not expand the Medicare to yes. begin with, and that depends how much money they get this time. Money gets shifted here, yeah. probably from blue states to red states. But look, this is a big deal. Governors have two years to figure out how to do health care in their states. Mm -hmm. That's a very heavy lift. The federal government, Congress, is basically saying, here, states, you solve this problem because we can't seem to do it. Just quickly, though, um, previous uh, issues that are, that are pre covered. Pre-existing conditions. Pre -existing conditions. Yes. The president That's a big issue. That, that, that will be on the bill. It is. Yeah, look, I don't think it's quite as bad as critics are saying the bill still requires states to have affordable options in place for people with pre-existing yeah. conditions, but there's more flexibility there, so things are going to change. Again, we talk about who red states. That? It's going to be the governors. It's going to be the state legislatures and the governors that are going to try to make an appeal if they want to bend some of the pre-existing okay. coverage conditions. Right. So it's on a state-by-state -state basis. Depending on where you live, things could change a lot or a little. We could right. talk about this for another 20 minutes. You bet. Yeah. We could. There's so much detail. to talk well, about. It there's a lot to read about people, here. Yeah. So yeah. They need to know. Yeah. Does. Brian, thank, thank you so much. Good to be here. Well, the time now is about 10 minutes uh, after the top of the hour. Finally, a victory for our veterans. Finally, how the Trump administration uh, just took aim at the VA to help our heroes get closer to the health care that they certainly deserve. And the Apple Watch that you just coughed up 400 bucks for might Whoa. be bad. What? The crucial defect Apple just admitted to. We'll talk about that.
little spirit for you, the officer who is going viral for all the right reasons. <laughs> all right, well, this is just such a scary story, a horror here uh, at home plate and really uh, in left field as uh, Yankees third baseman Todd Frazier visibly shaken after uh, his 105 mile per hour foul ball. That's the oh. speed he came off the bat at hit a toddler in the face. Oh, I can't imagine that. Well, yeah. players are now demanding more protection for their fans. Jackie Ibanez joins us now with that and, importantly, how the little girl is doing this morning. Good morning, Jackie. Hi, good morning, Robin. Heather, a lot of people talking about this, this story this morning. It's very disturbing. Some great news to report for you, though, that we have just learned that this little two-year-old girl is now out of the hospital after taking a direct hit. The nightmare scenario all unfolding in the stands just behind third base where she was enjoying the game with her grandparents. too graphic for us to show you and that says it all as far as Frazier you know a lot of them dads as well every player on the left field they're visibly shaken some of them even moved to tears as the girl received medical attention after the game Todd Frazier who hit the ball and is a father of two young children himself tweeted this today was tough watching that little girl I'll be thinking about her every day and her family please keep this beautiful girl in your prayers tonight the tragedy reigniting a league-wide debate about expanding protective netting down the entire third and first baselines at all ballparks but Yankee superstar Aaron Judge says the debate is over over. Aaron, what's your opinion in terms of uh, having netting around the field? Uh, we need it. And back in July, a foul ball hit uh, by Judge injured a man in the stands. And in May, a young boy was also hit by a broken bat during a Yankees game. Major League Baseball has recommended all teams expand their netting to at least 70 feet. The Yankees are now considering making more changes starting next season. Meanwhile, the league has made it clear it is the fans' responsibility to watch for all balls and bats. And teams are not liable if someone gets hurt. Those are very fast balls coming out. Yeah. Kind of you need to be paying attention. If you're sitting in those seats, you probably shouldn't have little kids sitting in those yeah. seats. That, that well, direct foul ball territory. An hour, it's uh, kind of hard to see yeah, some right. really right. yeah, Did I they finish there, yeah. that game? Does anybody know? I mean, I assume anybody? they did. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, they, they did. They started about four or five minutes. How in the world the players finish that game is beyond me yeah. because that was stunning. Thank you. Jackie, thanks. Well, let's go to another stunning admission. This is from Apple about its brand new $400 watch. It might not work. Yeah, Tracy Carrasco from our sister network Fox Business here to explain uh, this one. Hey, Tracy. Good morning, guys. Yeah, this Apple Watch isn't even on the shelf, and there's already a problem. Now, this is the $399 always connected watch, and apparently there's a Wi Fi glitch that appear, uh, causes it to lose all connectivity. So, Apple says it happens when users visit an open Wi Fi network that they may have gone to before so like at a hotel or a coffee shop now they say they're working on a software update to fix the problem but they better hurry because this thing is supposed to hit shelves tomorrow huh. yeah <laughs> all right what do we got coming up next uh, some holiday hiring already for Walmart or maybe not uh, actually no this is something that they did last year they found out it works so well they're gonna do it again now they're not hiring any holiday workers instead they're giving their current employees more hours. Now, the reason for this, uh, two things, you know, it may be to make jobs more attractive to kind of stop the turnover. And then the other thing, they may be finding a, a hard time filling those positions. According to the latest job reports, there's actually about 600,000 open retail positions right now. So. Okay, so maybe they can fill some of those. Exactly. And finally, a wine advent calendar, speaking of the holidays. You know, this is a great idea. So forget those really? boring advent calendars with the chocolates. But Aldi, the grocery store, they're going to be doing a a wine advent calendar. So the uh, calendar has 24 mini bottles of wine. So white, red, rosé, oh. bubblies, and uh, that equals about six bottles of you know alcohol in this advent calendar. Now sounds like a good time, but the only bad thing is this is available in the UK. Oh, okay, I know. And it's not a full there. bottle a day. It's no, like it's a just mini like bottle a little, a day. Yeah. Okay. Like a little airplane bottle. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Oh, you got to ship it from the UK. No big deal. Yeah. All right, Tracy. Thanks so thanks, much. Guys. 19 minutes after the hour, a self-admitted Antifa leader and criminal justice professor is under fire for calling to kill cops. This keeps happening, and now he's trying to explain himself. Am I supposed to to tell my students, yes, you should you should uh, become a police officer so that you can have a gun uh, at all times and possibly kill someone? I don't think that that's a good thing. No. School won't fire him, so now a number of Americans are stepping in. We'll
talk about that. And how is this for justice? The robber who was taken down by a Starbucks employee wants to sue? The robber wants to sue? Or you're going to not believe this one? Okay, welcome back. The Trump administration firing a former VA official for the second and final time after he was already rehired after being fired the first time. Brian Hawkins, the director of a hospital in Washington, was originally canned in July after his facility was found unsanitary and he was caught sending sensitive information to a private server. He appealed and was rehired by the VA in August. This second firing is thanks to the VA Accountability Act, which President Trump signed in June. Some accountability over the VA. We do love that. At least two petitions calling for the firing of a professor over a very disgusting tweet about dead cops are gaining steam online. Michael Isaacson, a criminal justice uh, professor at John Jay College in New York, sparking nationwide outrage for tweeting, it's a privilege to teach future dead cops. Can you believe that? He still has not apologized. Am I supposed to to tell my students, yes, you should you should uh, become a police officer so that you can have a gun uh, at all times and possibly kill someone? I don't think that that's a good thing. No. Your daily dose of idiot right there. One of those petitions already gaining nearly 900 signatures. Heather, over to you. to an enemy that is holding the world hostage, the elite spy, and the elite spy unit, I should say, will turn to their American allies to defeat the new threat. Well, the action-packed Kingsman sequel hits theaters tomorrow, and we are stepping into the Fox light now with Fox Senior VP of Marketing, Michael Tamara, who sat down with some of the stars. Good morning to That's you. That's right. Good You're morning. You're so lucky you just got I, back from London. You were there again. Someone's to do it, I oh, was yeah. just saying. But in 2014, when the Kingsman first took the world by storm, well, now they're back. This time teaming up with their American counterparts, the statesmen, to save the world again. We're from the King's Mission. Sean and Bream, hello! I think the Academy will be calling soon. Yeah, with Channing Tatum. Shannon's so lucky. <laughs> so <laughs> in a movie with Chan Channing Tatum. Thank Me you. Too. Thank you. Thank you. opens up tomorrow. All right, we'll go check it out. In the meantime, the time now is about 27 minutes after the top of the hour, and Nancy Pelosi pandering to dreamers, saying that their parents did a good thing, sneaking them into America. And our own Tucker Carlson is calling her out on that one. Breaking our laws is now a great thing, says one of our country's chief lawmakers. Their motive? It's always the same. Political power. Why Tucker says Democrats uh, care more about illegal immigrants than American citizens. Stakes to nuclear levels as the Obama-era nuclear deal hangs in the balance. And North Korea is still looming as the president meets with the leaders of Japan and South Korea today. Garrett Tenney joins us now. He is live in D.C. with the latest developments. Good morning, Garrett. Well, Heather and Rob, what's interesting here is this was by no means a scheduled announcement. After a meeting with the King of Jordan, President Trump told reporters he has made his decision on the Iran nuclear deal, but he wouldn't say just what that decision is. Shortly after that announcement, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson met with the parties of the nuclear deal, which he said is not accomplishing what it was supposed to do, which is stopping Iran from moving towards nuclear weapons. Regrettably, since the agreement was confirmed, we have seen anything but a more peaceful, stable region. And this is the real issue. And, and that's why we talk about uh, Iran defaulting on these expectations, because those expectations clearly have not, not been met. And the Trump administration must certify that Iran is in compliance with the nuclear deal every 90 days. The next deadline is just a few weeks away on October 15th. The more pressing nuclear threat, though, is North Korea. And the leaders of South Korea and Japan are praising President Trump's top talk towards the North's Kim Jong-un this week. Japan's prime minister now says the time for talk is over, though, and that more pressure is needed. Back here at home, Defense Secretary James Mattis says the U.S. must be prepared to respond if diplomacy fails. We continue to press on the diplomatic level, and that includes economic sanctions, of course. But at this time, uh, we must also uh, recognize the somber reality that military options must be available uh, in order to protect our allies and ourselves. And North Korea will likely be a major focus at the UN again today when President Trump meets with the leaders of Japan and South Korea.
Heather and Rob? Yeah, certainly will. All right, Gary, thanks so much. Thanks. You got it. All right, the state of California is suing the Trump administration, calling the proposed border wall unconstitutional. But Attorney General Jeff Sessions says it is a matter of government responsibility. We respect immigration policy. We understand it's a federal matter. But if it happens in our backyard, we demand that it be carried out in the right way following the rule of law. Why in the world would they want to object uh, to the law being followed, people who've come into the United States illegally and then commit additional crimes, why they shouldn't be deported is beyond me. Well, the lawsuit California's levying aims to stop design, planning, and construction of the wall. It argues the government is overstepping its authority by waiving environmental reviews as well as other laws. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi trying to make nice with dreamers. After this happened, she was shouted down at a news conference. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, now she is praising their parents for sneaking them into the U.S. Their families did a great thing for our country, bringing these kids here who are working, who are in the military, who are in school, who are uh, uh, a brilliant part of our future. Well, the president is putting pressure, of course, on Congress to come up with a solution to the Dreamer program. And in the meantime, Tucker Carlson is now calling out Nancy Pelosi and the Democratic Party as a whole. He says that the left is so power hungry that they are publicly pandering to whomever is willing to keep them in office. We're the adults in the Democratic Party. It used to be they were in leadership, but not anymore. Nancy Pelosi is the most powerful Democrat in the House of Representatives. She was once speaker, you'll remember. She may soon be again. Pelosi isn't just tolerant of illegal immigration. She is now explicitly encouraging it. Breaking our laws is now a great thing, says one of our country's chief lawmakers. Their motive? It's always the same. Political power. They lost it. They want it back, even if it means hurting the people they are sworn to protect. Democrats alienated the middle of the country during the Obama years, but they have no plans to convince those voters to return. Instead, they plan to replace them with new and more reliable voters from abroad. That's why they're far more upset about DACA than they are about the opioid crisis. What's amazing is that they're now saying it out loud. 45 victims confirmed killed in that 7.1 magnitude quake. Rescuers now in a race against time to find survivors trapped in so much rubble in Mexico City and the surrounding areas. Nearly a dozen people found dead in a church. The victims attending a baptism for a little girl when that quake hit. But we are seeing some stories of hope and survival. This dog found under a crumbled building and pulled to safety. And we also are hearing about kids found in that yeah. school as well. So Still some hope. For them. Yeah. yeah. And now let's go to Puerto Rico for you, though. Uh, they're waking up in total darkness this morning after taking a direct hit from Hurricane Maria. The entire well, Still some searching hope. for them. Yeah. yeah. And now let's go to Puerto Rico for you, though. Uh, they're waking up in total darkness this morning after taking a direct hit from Hurricane Maria. The entire island, if you can imagine, now without power. And authorities are warning that it may not be turned back on for months. On top of that, two feet of rain falling on parts of the island, turning streets, look at that, into a raging river. Officials saying, quote, the island is destroyed. President Trump tweeting to the governor, we are with you and the people of Puerto Rico. Stay safe. 3.5 million people. Another massive hurricane. Yeah. All right, 36 minutes after the hour, a college professor uh, offering extra credit to students who can calculate their white privilege. We told you about this yesterday. Why our next guest says pushing this agenda on a college campus is setting students up to fail in life. What is the First Amendment protecting? Uh, what, what is it entitled? The right to bear arms. That's okay. The and do you know your First Amendment rights? We went out to put Americans to the test. And talk about some irony. The Internet going after the First Lady for her outfit, bullying her online during a speech that she had to stop cyberbullying. Carly Shimkus here with reaction from those coming to the First Lady's defense. Good morning. Melania Trump making a major statement on cyberbullying, and instead of listening to what she said, the internet was focused on what she was wearing. 
All right, Carly Shimkus with Fox News Headlines 24 7, Sirius XM 115 has uh, what I'm not surprised by, I guess. Uh, yeah, a lot yeah. Of go this is going to be one of yeah. the most ironic things yeah. you'll hear all day. So, the First Lady spoke at a United Nations luncheon yesterday uh, where she talked about the dangers of cyberbullying, but in the process became a victim of cyberbullying herself. So, during her speech, she spoke about a leading by example by living by the golden rule, but it looks like some people were not paying attention while she was speaking because people quickly took to Twitter to comment on her outfit. Elaine on Twitter says, just watched Melania Trump speak. For some reason, it made me think of the blueberry girl from Willy Wonka commenting on her sort of oversized dress. Caroline on Twitter also says, in an attempt to have anything in common with her husband, Melania Trump has gained 190 pounds and used orange makeup. Now, other people used her speech to make fun of the president and accuse him of bullying himself. But Bandit on Twitter chimed in saying, you call out Trump for supposed bullying, yet you resort to bullying tactics against the first lady. Nice. Do unto others. Need anything to you. So, good point. You just can't good make this point, stuff though, up, right? You know? yeah. yeah, absolutely. So All right. Well, you know what? I want to know what you guys uh, think about this one. So actress Melissa Joan Hart is facing backlash for complaining that Hurricane Maria ruined her vacation. So she took to Instagram with an alert on the hurricane. And under that al uh, alert in the post, she says, and just like that, our family vacation is canceled. Such a bummer. But we plan to hit Punta Cana another time this year. So she deleted that post because she was quickly hit with messages just like this one saying, I think you should be more concerned that the people that live there instead of your meaningless vacation. And Marie on uh, and Twitter also says, no compassion for the people that just lost everything. Shame on her. I mean, she meant no harm, but I guess you got to think yeah. before you post things out break. there. Right? It's, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. All right. This is a great one to end on. A high school security officer in Wisconsin has become a social media sensation for leading a group of students at a football game in this cheer. Check it out. Look at them go. So that's Jack Tasher and the Appleton East High School doing the drive the bus cheer. Kind of brings me back to my high school days. Yeah. It's like a lot of fun, right? <laughs> so this has been viewed like oh, millions and millions of times. I think two million times on yeah. Facebook. So they're getting a lot drive of attention. The bus, the yeah, you didn't expect that from him, right? <laughs> Very yeah, good stuff. Great. Great. Thanks so much. Thank Thanks you. a lot. All right, now let's check in with Steve Ducey, see what's coming up here on Fox and Friends. Hey, Steve. Hey, hey Rob. Hey, Heather. Good morning.